Well, hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, another painting using Topaz Impression. We're using Topaz Studio 2. We're also working in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. Just want to start out showing you the plan of attack. Okay, so this is the original image. It's a stock image, by the way, and I'll leave a link in the description below in case you want to, you know, follow along with me and kind of work on this with me. And first off, I started off with uh, Topaz Adjust AI. Just add a little bit of extra detail and punch to the image here. Then I went into Topaz Studio 2 and did all the painting effects. Felt it was a little bit too blue, so I pulled back the blue with a hue and saturation adjustment. Um, and then did a little levels adjustment right here because I thought it was a little bit light right in here. Look, here's the before and there's the after. And then I did a little bit of a freehand vignette just to draw attention to the center of the image. And then I did a little bit of dodging. Bring up some snowflakes, bring up some of the snow in the ground, and I did a little bit of burning. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, click on the painting layer here, and then I'm going to come up to the last layer on the top, and shift and click that, and right click it, and select group from layers, and we'll just call this the uh, painting. This will be what, what I was working on here the painting right here so let me shut this eyeball off here and so we can start from scratch I'm gonna leave the uh, toe pass adjust the eye layer on there we're gonna start from there first thing we have to do is stamp uh, this layer up to a new layer or actually layer zero in this particular layer so that's shift option command or control E just to stamp that layer and that's what we're gonna work off of and now we're gonna go to filter and toe pass studio 2 and then in Topaz Studio 2, I, I wrote a little bit of notes down, but not detailed notes. So this picture could come out. It should be similar, but it could come out totally different, actually. So the first thing I did was I started out with impression. So let's go ahead and add filter and come down to impression. All right. And we're just going to work from here. Okay. So this is the, this is the default setting in impression. So it's on brush type 01. And as I recall here, I think I used Type 04 because I didn't like the way the snow looked here. You know, I didn't like all these uh, straight lines and things like this. So I believe I used Type 04. Yeah, and that gave me more of a snowy looking feel. And, and I really love these trees back in here and the way the cabin's looking. Now, you know, and if you've watched any videos in the past, you know I always like to come down to the texture. And a lot of times I'll just click on Original. Because sometimes you'll see the canvas showing through in the background. In this case, I kind of like the canvas showing through. So let's go back to solid. But I don't like all this white in here. So what I did was, if you come down to where it says background color here and click on this. And you'll get this uh, colors, uh, the color wheel up here. And it may look different in Windows here, depending how your computer's set up. But it's going to probably have an eyedropper tool. So I click on the eyedropper tool and I'm just going to pick a color in here maybe something like around here somewhere yeah and you can see how those how that filled in because it used that color now if i want to try another color i can click on this again and maybe pick a lighter color and not happy with that yet and maybe somewhere like here yeah i think that I think that looks good and then you can just click OK. So that's the first step. So already it's looking pretty good. Now let's see what we want to do extra to this thing. All right so now we can work with our brush size here and of course we have low medium and high strokes. Let's click on high strokes and see what that looks like. Okay makes my snowflakes a little more defined. I kind of like that. I'm getting some definition back in here on these trees and things and that's looking pretty good let's take our brush size and move it up a little bit now the larger the brush size the less detail we're going to see back in there and and we can just keep experimenting with this now paint volume we can pull this up and see what we get see now the picture gets a little little all white and blown out so i don't like that so let's just take that off let's pull up the paint opacity here and see if I pull that up, it's getting this little bit of a blotchy look in here. And I'm not really 
liking that too much. But we can play with this because we might find a little spot that we like it at. So let's take it the whole way off. Okay, paint opacity, and let's just start pulling it up. Now, if you double click it or double click paint opacity, it defaults at 50, and that's probably pretty good. So let's just bump it up a little bit. That That's not bad. I mean, we can see the snow in there. And you just have to, you know, kind of decide do you like it. And I think around 54 looks pretty good. And now we can play with the uh, stroke rotation. Let's play with that and see if we like that. Yeah, can you see the change there when I move that? It's kind of moving the snow around a little bit. Yeah, let's work with that a little bit. I like the way the snow is looking here, by the way. And, of course, we could play with the stroke rotation, uh, stroke ro rotation variation, I should say. Sorry about that. Having a hard time talking. Now, we can adjust the stroke width. Right now, it's at the default setting of zero. Let's pull it to the right, see if we want our stroke width you know getting lo longer I should say or wider that's not really doing much so I'm just going to leave it there and the stroke length on the original I don't think I really did much to it and see I'm getting those lines back in there again so you really got to watch this stuff and see what it's doing let's double click stroke length and we're back to the snow look and I think that's looking really nice now let's see here um, let me refer to my notes here okay the next thing I did was I added another filter in here, and that was the dehaze filter right here. And I pulled the strength up, and let's see what we get. Yeah, see, it's giving me it's giving me that little bit of a blue tint, and that's one of the things I got rid of in uh, Photoshop with this uh, hue saturation. But I liked a little bit of that blue in there. I thought that looked nice, and it it's pumping up some detail and things especially like up in the foreground here. Again, I think it looks a little too blue, but I like what's happening in here. And we'll take care of that later. But I like what's happening back in here. Even better now than I did on my original. So that's looking pretty good. So let's leave that there. And what else did I do here? I added some precision contrast. Can't remember exactly what I did here, but I think I, think I took the medium up. I don't want to go too far here because it's going to look a little... F I don't like what's happening down in here. It looks a little funny. Let's see what happens if I go to the left. I might just pull that up a little bit. Let's take the low up. And this is getting a little too white in here, so i got to be careful there. I don't want to blow out these highlights in here. Maybe a little bit of uh, low in here. And the reason I use this precision contrast is just to... It kind of like pulls out the painterly effect a little bit. It kind of like tweaks it a little bit. Let's take the, uh, see now I can take the micro up. And sometimes that looks good when you really uh, exaggerate these effects. But I might just go with a little bit of micro. Maybe something like there. I think that's looking pretty good. Now if you click on the image itself or off to the side, I usually like to click on the uh, canvas off to the side here. Click with your left click with your mouse and hold that down so you can see the before and after and that's what we got so far and that's looking pretty good now we could also take this opacity and pull this opacity back and let some of the original image show through if we wanted to oh i'm on precision contrast forgive me for that i didn't want to do that i want to go back to impression actually and i'm going to take the impression back a little bit and see we can let some of the original image show through if we wanted to which I don't in my case. I want this to look super painterly because I think it looks really pretty. I like the mood of this of this scene right now. I think it looks really cool. And um, let's see here. You can go to painting progress down here. Sometimes I'll adjust this slider and, and see what it looks like. And actually, when I pull that back a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, it gets a little softer. That's it, 81. Let's pull it the whole way up and see. A little more snowflakes are showing through there. So I might just pull this back. That was around 81. Let's try 94. See how this can aid in just pulling some of that snow back a little bit. So if you had too much snow in there, maybe that's 87. Let's try 85. I think I'm going to settle on 85. I think that looks really nice. Now, did I do anything else? 
I did one other thing and I added uh, one more uh, impression filter. So let's come back up to precision detail here. Let's just see if that's going to help this time. So let's add filter. Let's go to impression. And, uh, and I didn't really do anything here, but I believe, and you can see it's like softening up the image, but maybe let's go to type 04 again so we can maintain that snowy look. Now that's really making the image look really soft. So let's pull it the whole way off and let's add a little bit. I was using this to kind of like uh, tone the effects back a little bit by adding a little more painterly up on top, giving it more of that uh, more subdued soft feel, if that makes sense. And okay, so there it is right there. Now let's try something here. Let's click this eyeball and see the before and the after. And I think I like that. I, it, it just kind of like softens it up a little bit. And I think that's going in a nice direction here. So I'm going to go ahead and say accept. Now, I mean, you got to commit at some point and say, we're going to, we're going to accept that. And now we're going to uh, see what we're going to do next here. So what I want to do now is see if I can pull some of this blue out. I mean, it doesn't look too bad actually, but let's just see what happens if we pull a little blue out. So let's come down to our adjustment layer icon here and get a uh, hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now, it, I have mine set up where it defaults with this little tool right here, this little picker tool. So you'll see that little eyedropper here. So I can uh, hover that over some of this blue tone here, give it a click, and you'll notice when I do, it picks this range of color right here. And you can adjust these sliders if you need to pick up more or less color here. But for now, I think it's good just to leave it right where it is. So now watch, it's just going to target blues, and you'll notice right here it says blues, right? So if I take the saturation off, it gets rid of all the blue. But let's start at zero with no blue removed. And let's start removing some of that blue. Now blue is nice in a winter scene because it blue is cold, right? So, but I just don't want it over blue. So I just want to pull some of that blue saturation out. And I think maybe right there looks really good. Now we can always come back and readjust this. And then the next thing I did was, um, what did I do? I can open up this painting group here and see what I did. Okay, so the next thing was, yeah, I ran a levels adjustment. I felt this area was a little bit too light in here. But actually right now, it looks good, so I don't think I have to mess with that. Uh, right here may be a little bit light, so let me see what I can do here. Let me get a lasso tool. That's type L for the lasso tool. And let's just lasso around this area right in here. Okay. And I'm going to right click in here and go to feather. And I'm going to feather this um, about 125 pixels. That's just going to make a nice soft edge around there. And now when I come down to my adjustment layers and get a levels adjustment layer, what I can do is uh, come see this, um, this uh, graduation across here from black to white. If I take this uh, slider right here, which is on the white tones, and if I pull this back to the left, see what it does? It eases off in those whites there. Now that's too much, so let's just examine that and just see. Now I have that selection. I had that selection around there, and you can see it made a layer mask there. And so all I'm doing is easing off in that white there a little bit. And I just need it to look natural. I just kind of want it to fade in with the rest now. If I take this adjustment here and move this to the right, it'll make the lights get lighter here. You can see that. But I think I'm going to leave it there. I might just ease off in this a little bit more. Okay. Maybe somewhere right around in there. Now let's click on the before and after. So we'll click this eyeball. There's the before and there's the after. And if I felt I went too far, I can take this opacity slider, take it the whole way off, and just start to build it up. get it to where I think it looks good and I'm thinking maybe right there that looks pretty good now what was our next step let's open up this group again and yeah the next step was a freehand vignette so to do that what I'm going to do is I still have the lasso tool up so I'm just going to paint a vignette around here with the lasso tool where I think the vignette should go 
maybe something like that okay and then I'm gonna come and grab an adjustment layer you can pretty much take any adjustment layer you want I'm just gonna grab a curves adjustment layer and then I'm going to come to its properties see right here where it says curves and you see that little I call it a washing machine it looks like a front loading washing machine so click on that and that's your properties here and see where it says feather here we can come and feather this and I generally like to feather this up around like you know like 370 pixels or something like that it just makes this mask feathered now if I option click this mask you'll see see what it's done it's add that feathering in there and I can look I can come here and I can readjust it so if I went too much so you know maybe around 240 option click or alt click this mask again that's a good little tip so if you want to see what your layer mask actually looks like now we can come back up and click on this little curves icon right here now i'm not going to pull the curve down all i'm going to do is change the blend mode to multiply which will darken now my mask is actually the opposite of what i want so what i need to do is invert this so command or control i to invert it so now the darkening effect is going to go around the edges and makes a nice vignette now i love to make my vignettes this way it's very organic and it looks really good and you can draw it just where you want it to go so 100 percent is probably way too much so usually what i like to do is take the opacity take it the whole way off and then just start to slowly build it up and i don't like my uh vignettes to be like like man you got a vignette on there like i just like them to be a very subtle vignette but i just want to keep your eyes in the image and this kind of closes off all the edges and keeps you into the image and that's looking pretty good so far all right if you've watched some of my videos in the past you always hear me saying really study your image and make sure there's you know it looks good or if there's any problems you want to go ahead and fix them and this thing we just fixed here where we uh took some of this lightness here and pulled it down a little bit with that levels adjustment this blotchiness right in here kind of bugs me a little bit so what i'm going to do is type l to get a lasso tool and i'm going to just lasso around this area in here and maybe even up into this dark area up in here something like that okay and what i want to use is content aware field to see if i can fix this and photoshop uh 2020 has a great new content aware feature which is vast improved and if you watch some of my some of my videos in the past you might have seen me do this but what we need to do is come up here to edit. Now we're going to have an issue here. Here's content, content aware field when it's uh, grayed out. Okay. So we can't use it yet. So let me uh, type command D to deselect this here. What you need to do is have a l actual pixel layer to work off of. Right now we're on a curves adjustment layer. So that's not going to work. So all we need to do is, is make a stamp layer above here. And that's shift option command or control E. And that just takes all this information and stamps it up onto a layer. Now we can go ahead and let's come up here to select. And here's a good little tip. You can just uh, type or not type, but click on reselect and it'll bring your selection back up. So you don't have to redraw it. So that's a good little tip to remember. All right. So now we can come up here to edit and come to content aware fill. And right now I'm set up in the custom uh, setting here. So all I need to do is get a brush here and kind of paint where I think I want it to sample from. So I'm going to get it to sample from maybe like this area right in here and maybe, and you can see it updates itself over here and maybe some of this area right around in here. And every time I paint, it'll re, uh, readjust itself. And that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept that. But you can come over here and you can play with different things like uh, color adaptation. And you can go through here and try none. And it'll update itself. And you can see what it did there. Let's come back to where it was at default. And just watch right in here, as you can see. That looks pretty good. And I think that's pretty much taking care of my problem. So I'm just going to click OK. But sometimes you get a little nasty uh, job where it doesn't it's not looking right so what you do is you just go through and keep trying these different settings I usually start with color adaptation and go through each one of these click on them and watch the area actually that looks pretty good that actually looks better so experiment you can also go to rotate rotation adaptation and click through some of these as well I'm not going to do it because it looks good hey if it ain't broke don't fix it click OK but you have those that you can play with and now our selection still here so if I do command or control D deselect and I think that looks pretty good right in there. There might be just like a little bit of a line right here. So what I might do is 
even on the same layer here I'm gonna get a um, healing brush and that is J for the healing brush and I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger right in here and I'm just gonna paint right across here and see that little bit of a seam I don't know if you can see that I'm just gonna paint across there and that fixes that right up now I'm happy with that so look here's the before and here's the after it, to me it was sticking out like a sore thumb and I wanted to get rid of that okay so there it is so far and the last thing we have to do is a little bit of dodging and burning but that's a really great step because it's really gonna take this uh, picture to another level so let's do that next I went ahead and added a blank layer here and I put it in the overlay blend mode because that's what I'm, what I'm going to use to dodge with and I set myself up with white paint and I'm using an opacity of like 20% we're going to start out with 20% and I have a nice soft feathered brush here you know it's it 0% hardness here so I'm just going to look for some light areas and start painting like on these trees back in here pick out some highlights that I want to bring up like some of the snow in this tree just to kind of make you look at it yeah add some of the magic in here and maybe back in here like hit a couple little boughs of I guess that's what you call them boughs and maybe in here hit some you know bring some highlights and just just play with this and and um you don't have to do every light spot but just look for light areas and we're going to do some snow as well maybe these bushes up in here hit a little spot maybe over in there don't have to hit them all and maybe some of this back in here and let's see here maybe add some back here on the where this field ends right here okay just to and then maybe some spots in here and wiggle that brush around you know you want it to look organic like it's actually happening in nature okay and you can just paint and this is you know you, you already have a painting here so you can be a little sloppy here but you want to be a good sloppy not a bad sloppy you know so you can just paint in here and like I said we're just adding some little accents in here trying to bring some interest to our image so I'm just painting away, have some fun, you know, and you could vary your opacity. If you're getting it too light, you can, you can cut it down a little bit. And again, I'm just looking for some spots of highlights in here. Now I'm going to take my opacity. I'm going to type the one key that takes it down to 10%. So now it's going to be less. So I'm going to ease it off in here a little bit. And I might come up in some of the snow up in here and just light up some snowflakes. It's a wonderful winter wonderland. You know, we just, it's our own little magical world that we're creating here. And it's, it's a lot of fun to create it. So, you know, you don't have to hit everyone, but, you know, randomly hit them wherever you think. I used to always love to watch Bob Ross. And he would say, wherever you think it should go, that's where it should go. Just commit to it and put it in. So, a little bit of snowflakes in here. Maybe, maybe some lightning on this roof here. Maybe make my brush a little bit smaller. And maybe come up the edge here a little bit. And maybe come back in here and get a little bit of stuff. Just not everywhere, but just little highlights so we can bring the viewer in to really look at our magical world, our winter wonderland. Okay, so let's click on the dodge layer, the eyeball. So here's before the dodging and here's after. So look at the magic it adds. Isn't that nice? That excites me every time. Now, if you felt you went overboard, you can take the opacity, take it off, and then just build it up slowly and, you know, I want a decent amount of it in there, but I might just back it off a little bit. It's always good to err on the side of a little too less than too much. Okay, so there's that. Now let's, uh, next thing we're going to do is add a burning layer. I went ahead and made a, put a new blank layer here and called it burn black paint and put it in the soft light blend mode. So that's the mode we want to use for burning. Okay, so I'm starting out at 20% and let's just find some dark spots where we want to put some shadows, you know. So 
let's go to let's go to 10%. So I'm typing the one key. I thought that was a little too strong. And I'm just looking for some shadow areas, which adds a lot of depth and dimension. And that's really cool. And some of these areas in here, on these trees back here, in here a little bit, it's back in here. And again, you don't have to add it everywhere. Just, just look for certain areas. And every time I stroke over again, it gives me another 10%. So I can build this up. And, you know, take your time, have some fun with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Some shadows under here, maybe a little bit of shadows back in here, over in here a little bit. And think like a painter. What's a painter think like? I don't know. I think he thinks creatively, you know, like, how would it look more beautiful, excite me more, you know, think like that. It's fun. Okay, so let's see. Let's put a little shadow under our cabin here. Nice little place to live back in here. Out in this nice snowy field. So there we go. And let's click on the eyeball. So here's the before and here's the after. So isn't that nice? Now if we wanted to, we can make our brush bigger. This is a mountain back here. And we could maybe just, you know, run some... You know, give some hints and suggestions that we've got a mountain back here, people. You know, something like like that. Okay, that looks pretty cool. So let's click the eyeball. Here's the before and here's the after. So I think that's looking pretty good. And if we wanted to, again, we could ease off in that just a little bit. Let's come down to about, um, you know, 87%. Let's click the eyeball before and after and after well there it is i hope you enjoyed this one i had a lot of fun making it again i'm going to leave the link in the description below so you can download this picture the stock image in case you want to try try it work along with me that would be awesome you'll learn a lot if you do that um if you like this video today please give it a like and share it with your friends if you're not yet subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing and if you do click the bell notification icon this way every time i upload a new video you'll be notified about it well, thanks so much for uh, joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, and don't forget, leave comments and questions in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Well, again, thanks for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.